Hi, this is Mark Snyder with Worship Song Band. I'm going to show you Pro Presenter version 7 and Worship Song Band version 6 running together uh, with MIDI command of Pro Presenter from Worship Song Band. There are three components to this demo. Um, the brand new Pro Presenter version 7, including MIDI support on Windows, which is the first time they've had that. Um, Worship Song Band version 6. Um, and then this um, loop MIDI port um, right here. So this is basically a virtual MIDI cable that I'm using to connect Worship Song Band to ProPresenter. Um, this is so it's a, a software port where you can send messages and they can be received by MIDI applications. Um, the loop MIDI was downloaded this um, nerds.de site. Um, I've had pretty good luck with this port. I've used it on a lot of testing and things. Um, and you can just install this. It's freeware. It goes right in your system tray, and then it'll connect MIDI devices together. Um, it's another and uh, some cool music stuff that comes out of Germany. So this is a German company that puts this out. Um, OK, so um, how do I configure the virtual MIDI port, first of all? How do you get these two applications connected? Um, I'll start on the Worship Song Band side. Under Settings, Pedal Control, I have this MIDI Out check. I have three selected. If you check this, uh, if you move this little dial, you get different MIDI possibilities. Um, three is the one that lands on the loop MIDI port. So when you get that, basically, um, and that's checked, Worship Song Band is now configured to send MIDI um, on that virtual MIDI part. Um, on the ProPresenter side, it's pretty easy as well. Under Preferences, um, you end up adding a MIDI device down here. Once you have that, you uh, go to your Devices tab over here. Um, then I have a MIDI device configured. Um, if I look at the settings for that device, it is set up to listen to the loop MIDI port as well. So um, that loop MIDI port now is the source for, for uh, ProPresenter and the destination for Worship Song Band. And so MIDI messages will flow between the two. I'll reconnect that. Um, and so the way I have these set up, they're both stored in the settings. So when you launch both programs, it'll be ready to talk. Um, so what goes over that MIDI port? Um, how does this actually work? If you go to this MIDI map here in ProPresenter, um, you're presented with this GUI that is all the MIDI note messages that ProPresenter can receive and what they do. Clear commands, um, video controls, presentation actions, and so on. Um, so you can go crazy with this, I'm sure. Um, um, the ones, and then they select by index ones um, down here. So uh, the demo I'm going to show you makes use of the clear slide command, um, and it also makes use of select playlist item and toggle trigger slide. Um, so the way these note commands work is um, you the select by index is you if it gets in 19, then there's a second part of that message called the velocity or the intensity, and that intensity will give you uh, which one. So basically, uh, select playlist item 19 with a 3 will give you the third playlist item. 20 and a 4 will give you the fourth slide. Um, so you'll see on the Worship Song Band site where I actually send these messages across and how that works. And I recommend that you use the select by index. Um, you'll see why when I do the demo. Um, so I'm going to close that. Um, basically, I have two songs loaded into ProPresenter. I choose to praise you and gladly adore you. Um, the way these songs are set up is the way that you're going to want to do it. Basically, for each slide um, is going to have whatever you want on that slide. It's a little hard to read. This is the preview display here. But um, uh, for each slide, whatever you want to have on that slide, and you're going to want to repeat things if they're repeated in the song. So the way this uh, this song is set up, um, I'll actually go over to that song right now. Um, you have 
verse, verse, chorus, 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 verse, verse. So you notice the verse is repeated, but I put it in the song twice. And that way you get a numbering of slides from one, which is the first slide, which is this blank slide, through to the end of the song where you have 30, which is the, the final slide. And um, when, you, when you go to automate this in Worship Song Band, it'll be very easy to set up to land on the slide that you want. And then I have the second song right in here. Okay, so that's how the Pro Presenter will be set up. Um, so on Pro Presenter, if you clicked the um, song and the first slide, you would get its background up. And then as you advance, you would get the slide like that. Um, same thing for the second song, first slide background. You'll notice the styles are different, so I can figure that. I'm by no means a Pro Presenter expert, so um, you'll probably your slides will probably look a lot better than mine, but um, that's fine because that's not the point of this demo anyway. Um, so that's the Pro Presenter setup basically. This is the preview menu, and then this is uh, what we want to see happen in Worship Song Band. So, what you want is when you go to a song, you want Pro Presenter to switch to the first slide of that song and then start playing. Um, so, um, I'm going to start the song off. Intro, two, three, four. This is actually a really good song, so you should check this out over on Worship Song and download it. Now watch when the lyrics actually come in. Verse, two, three, four. They came in before the section which is what you want. You want to be able to program your lyrics to come in exactly when you want them. I'll just skip that jump for now. I'll talk about that a little later. So you can see it's all in time and the, the pro presenter is following along perfectly. Now we're going to go to the chorus. Chorus, two, three, four. Um, so so that's, that's how you want it to work. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to set that up. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, um, there's been some talk that ProPresenter doesn't do well with MIDI cues or that there's bugs in the new, and I have not encountered any missing cue bugs in uh, this combination. So um, at least using a virtual MIDI port this way, I'm getting rock solid and reliable operation between Worship Song Band and ProPresenter. So, um, you know, you can try it out for yourself and, and check it out and see what you think. Um, anyway, so how do we set this up? Uh, so um, if I right click on this song timeline and worship song band, and I select the section actions menu, this is where I program the um, stuff that's going to happen in my song. So um, you'll notice here I have a couple of commands. I have a select pro presenter song. Um, at time zero when the song is loaded and a select pro presenter slide on song load. And so basically what that does is uh, when the song is loaded, so um, when I load this song as an example, it's going to go to the first slide and load up that song in pro presenter. So I'll go back to that one. Um, so that's going to basically switch you over to that song and switch you to the first slide of that song if you wanted to do it that way. Um, going back to the section actions, in the intro, there's no actions. But in verse 1 is where we have more MIDI automation. Um, so the action I have here is send MIDI command. So when you're adding these, you just click this plus, and you can select from all of these actions. Um, only this one is used for pro presenter. These other things can do, be, do things like uh, fade in a pad. So you, like if you want to fade in and fade out pads to do transitions. 
um, switch the built-in Lyric backgrounds if you're using those, uh, which are not required to use per presenter. You can just use the uh, um, song timeline and automation if you want. Um, send the MIDI command, which we're using, um, and then a bunch of other stuff here, which you can read on the website. Um, so um, the way this works is the uh, action is send MIDI command. The which action is uh, named select per presenter slide. Um, the time reference is at two beats before the start of the section, and it's going to do it every time through. Um, so basically, in your song timeline, you have all of these MIDI automation commands programmed right in. Um, and those are basically what you set up to automate your slides. Um, so you notice I have something here called select per presenter slide. Um, so that's what we call a MIDI alias. Um, if you look at this Edit MIDI Commands button here, um, I'll kind of center that up, make it a little easier to read. Um, if you look at this here, uh, you'll see that Select PP Slide is listed in this um, MIDI alias file, and it's programmed to send a note on with a note 20, and this uh, variable we call it Song Occurrence Plus One. Um, and so what this basically is telling Worship Song Band is that when I program select PP slide, send a note on 20, and use the occurrence of that command in the song plus the number one to actually send out that MIDI note. And so the way that these variables work, the other one is called current song up here. Um, the way that these variables work is that when you uh, when worship song band processes the song, it's going to count up all of the select PP slide commands and number them with that variable. So basically, this is going to send a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and all the way through the song. And so you'll notice the command just says select PP slide. So Worship Song Band is doing the step sequencing in the background for you. Um, and the, the advantage of that is that the, um, the command is identical for every identical section. So like if I've got verse three, I've got select PP slide at time two beats before start, select PP slide 15 beats after start, Verse 4 is the same. Actually, I have it 14 because I, I wanted to change the timing. But generally, they're the same thing. Um, 2.15, 2.14, 2.15, 2.14. Um, the choruses, you'll see 2.14 and 35, 2.14 and 35. The bridges, 2.15, 2.15. So the timings are all the same. These commands are identical. And so when you're programming the song, I can set up the bridge, um, get it to work. And so actually when I'm programming this, it's kind of cool. So I can just basically click and it'll actually send that MIDI command. I can press start and just test it out right then. So once I get that dialed in, um, I can just press this copy button, select the section that I want to add those commands to, press the paste button. And so like I can do all my choruses uh, just by setting up one and then copying it off of that and pasting it onto all the others. So the sum total of that is, is uh, basically you can dial in the arrangement of a song with these MIDI commands in very short time, like like within five minutes or something, you've got the thing running and doing everything that you want. Um, and the nice thing about these step sequence commands I showed you is as follows. So like, if I actually go here and I'm just starting in the verse, So notice I've got a pre-programmed cue in there. With, there's another video on that if you want to check it out. So it's going to cue up the chorus. Chorus, two, three, four. Notice how it went directly to that. So, um, and, and if you change in the moment, like, let's say you just decide you want to loop the chorus here. 
or just go to this chorus. So I'll cue that up. I'll just do two choruses. I'll skip those two verses. Chorus two, three, four. Notice how it followed right along. Um, so the bottom line is if you use these step sequence commands, um, we're s the, 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 um, whatever's automated by MIDI, if it's set up right, will just follow right along with you and you can flow in the moment, you can loop or you can do whatever you want and the thing will just follow right along with you. So it's, it's perfect for basically having freedom to do whatever you want in the song. Um, If you look at these section actions, all of this automation is saved as part of your set. So basically, when I, when the set um, when you exit Worship Song Band, that set is going to be saved. Um, if you click this Save to Master button, it's going to save that automation to that master set list, which means every time you load that song, that automation is going to come back. And if you go ahead and click save here and save your set list to a file. If you type the set list, you could basically save it to a file. Then what would happen is uh, you would get an OSZ um, file or an OSL file basically, which would contain that set. And um, then if you, if you transported that file to another copy of Worship Song Band and copied it into your library, all of this automation would come back with it. And so um, the upshot of that is you can you can do all of this programming and automation on another computer with ProPresenter and Worship Song Band installed, and then bring that along to your church and just upload it and test it out real quick, and you're ready to go. So um, that's that's our version of syncing stuff. Uh, you just basically save the set and move the file. It's that's been in there for like three years right now. So um, it, and it it works great. Um, for you to be able to do that. Um, and the ProPresenter, if you use it in this mode with, uh, um, without licensing it, I, I haven't licensed this, I just downloaded it. Um, it'll just show a watermark, so it doesn't really let you use it for a service, but you can definitely use it on a home machine for setup. Um, and so this, um, this uh, is running on my primary development computer, which is a Dell, uh, gaming laptop. It's about three years old, um, 16 gig RAM, um, a four gig video card, um, running Worship Song Band and ProPresenter together. It's about a $950 machine. Um, I almost never spend more than $1,000 on any computer. Um, and this, this, I think, for a lot of churches would be plenty of computer to run both of your tracks and your ProPresenter um, to a screen. Um, you might want a desktop machine with a, a video card with more outputs, um, but you can get those for a similar price point, like from Dell gaming computers or something like that. So your, um, you know, Windows 10 to do this stuff, I think is a very interesting proposition because it has the possibility for you to really uh, save on hardware cost and get going with this stuff pretty quickly. So um, that's all I'll say and good luck with it.